today, uh, chairman of the uh, C3 course, uh, and I'd like to welcome everyone today to uh, C3 uh, virtual event, a reunion of our Japan. Uh, it's been a great uh, and a special relationship between C3 meeting and uh, our Japanese colleagues, including uh, uh, many uh, very close friends in Dr. Shite, uh, Dr. Otsuji, Dr. Akasaka, you know, uh, they are already on our uh, course co-director panel as a uh, uh, for C3. Uh, in Dr. Akasaka's back view, I can see actually one of the trophies uh, that he's received from uh, C3, and I can see that, you know, uh, that looks very nice. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Hanaoka, who is also on our uh, scientific advisory board, uh, and it's very, very kind of him to be here. Dr. Uh, Yasaka, who's also on our scientific advisory board and Dr. Ishihara, who does a lot of work, you know, to uh, bring many uh, investigators, uh, young investigators to our meeting. So uh, C3 is very, very grateful for all of your support and your friendship. Uh, it's very special to us. It means a lot to me uh, personally and professionally. Uh, and uh, we hope uh, that, uh, uh, in future, uh, this uh, friendship and uh, uh, our affection with each other will continue. You know, I'm very much uh, hopeful that uh, we have a chance to see everyone uh, next year in person in uh, Florida again. Uh, you know, unfortunately, due to COVID this year, we could not uh, do our meeting live, but we are uh, uh, signed up to do the meeting again next year. Uh, let's uh, pray to God that uh, this coronavirus situation improves. Uh, everywhere in the world, and uh, we will continue our journey in uh, interventional cardiology. So, with that, those introductory remarks, I, I'd like to uh, start the session. We have some very, very interesting uh, uh, four uh, CTO cases and a four OCT cases. Uh, so, we'll, we'll start with the first uh, CTO case. Uh, the first CTO case will be presented by, by Dr. Yuzo Hayashi from Dayuki uh, General Hospital. He will have 10 minutes to do his presentation, and then we will have a commentary by uh, Suji sensei and Hanaoka sensei and, and some discussion in five minutes. And that's going to be our flow. Uh, so I will now uh, ask uh, Dr. Hayashi to start his presentation. Is it okay that you share your screen? Okay, just moments to. Hmm? Please, um, there's. Okay, okay. Just oh, oh, perfect, perfect. All right, and if you can make it in presentation mode, thank you. <laughs> just a moment. Uh, So is it okay? Yes. Let's thank great. You. Thank you very much. Yeah. So thank you, Chairman. I am honored to be given such an opportunity to present here today. Uh, I'd like to present a case I performed that result in uh, in failure. Uh, I have no uh, financial conflict of interest to disclose concerning the presentation. At first, I'd like to speak about the background of this uh, presentation. The success rate of CTO procedure is improving uh, due to many established techniques, uh, including the retrograde method. The critical factor of the retrograde method is uh, externalization. Externalization provides maximum backup during advancement of uh, devices to target regions. So according to my limited experience, uh, once externalization has been established, uh, it generally means success, uh, success is likely. This is case, uh, this patient was an 80-year-old male. 
And his chief complaint was uh, low BP during HD treatment. And his risk factor includes uh, hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia, uh, hemodialysis, and he was a fast smoker. UCG revealed the LVEF was 58% and the uh, uh, world motion was normal. The patient was di diagnosed as having dialysis, uh, this dialysis and uh, silent myocardial ischemia. So I'll show you the initial CG. The fractional part of the LED had a significant, significant stenosis, and uh, there was collateral flow to the PDA uh, by a septal branch. The please focus on the CTO region characteristics. The entry of uh, the CTO was branch type, uh, just uh, just distal from the RV branch. The Android uh, contrast media field uh, distal to lumen by a uh, uh, bridge collateral. The length uh, of the CTO region was less than 20 millimeters. The severe classification uh, was visible from angio and the cardiac CT. The JCTO uh, score was two. The uh, stenosis proximal to the CTO region was too tight to the advanced uh, devices to the CTO entry. So region modification was performed with rotor blader. After that, uh, undergrad wiring was retried using uh, an anchor technique. However, the undergrad wire couldn't pass the CTO entry uh, due to the severe classification. So undergrad wiring uh, failed and uh, I switched to a little bit approach. After several time, several time uh, uh, attempted to negotiate the sector channel. So so 3 wire was advanced to distal uh, PDA. And the uh, kitchen wire technique and the uh, little, uh, little grid wire cross were both failed. So finally, externalization was established by extended reverse cut. And the externalization was performed and so maximum backup was achieved. So I believe I am close to successfully completing this procedure. So all that uh, remains uh, a prioritization and stenting. But nonetheless, even using uh, a variety of balloons uh, with uh, guided extension, uh, devices were not able to pass the region due to uh, due to the severe clarification. So finally, uh, the procedure was failure, despite uh, externalization being established. So in summary, uh, PCR for an RCC2 was attempted. The arterial method failed. The, the procedure was changed to a little bit approach. No one could pass the CTO region even after externalization was achieved. So <clears throat> this is my consideration. Uh, when the devices can pass the region due to severe clarification, region modification using a lot of radar is one uh, possible solution. But in this case, uh, the wire was passed uh, through the subintima space due to employing a, a reverse cut technique. So rotor blader was, uh, has a high risk of incurring a coronal rupture. So I have one idea, but that I have never tried. 
And uh, after pressing the uh, guide extension proximal uh, to the classification, the rotor blader is advanced. The guide extension pro, uh, protects the advantage from the rotor blader. So <clears throat> I have a question to expert doctors. Uh, do you have any experience in advancing rotor blader into the subintimal space? And how to build out in this case? Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, let me invite uh, two of the uh, great uh, operators in the world, Dr. Uh, Otsuji and Dr. Hanaoka, who uh, requires really no introduction. Uh, their uh, CTO expertise uh, are known worldwide, and they will now uh, present uh, their commentary on this case. Dr. Otsuji? Yes, yes, yes. So oh, I, I have some question for uh, Dr. Hayashi. Yes. So uh, you already externalized. Yeah. On the left blade, that it changes the wire to the RG3. Yes. So you you pass the uh, left blade micro catheter. Yes. The anti blade guiding catheter. Yes. Right. Yes. So I think the the backup hose is a little bit uh, uh, weak because maybe you using the guiding the uh, JR hose. JR. So at first I use a L one, but I change, I change the guiding cluster after externalization because uh, maybe uh, uh, I I have some uh, I feel uh, uh, some resistance in guiding cluster. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The coating is disappear. Okay, okay. So I think the uh, JR4. Okay, okay. So if you have another uh, method to uh, get a strong backup, maybe you can pass a small balloon because you already uh, passed a, a microcaster from the letter blade. Yes. Yeah. So, um... so, okay. So, another your question is that uh, I think the, uh, only the small uh, um, uh, napkin uh, uh, calcium is uh, blocked the uh, uh, um, anti blade uh, devices. Yes, so uh, the stack position, the, the location of the uh, balloon stack is uh, also, and also this that that means that it that that means that that, that this region, that region is the intimate space, not sub intimate. So you can uh, do the low tablet only that region. Yes, so uh, this is my. Uh, uh, this slide, uh, sorry, <laughs> schema is uh, made by me. So the, so I agree with your opinion. The the clarification is in, inside of the uh, uh, intima. So the yeah. that's the proximal. So I I uh, this case I use the extended uh, reverse cut. So did you, did you check the proximal side by IBAS? Yes, <laughs> yes. Already, you already. already see the large sub intimal space? Yes. Apart? Yes. I already checked. Mm. But if you don't didn't create a more more chemat uh, big huge hematoma, you can do rotor. It is that kind. Mm. So you, we... you, you show the good method. I, I sometimes and I one one or two two times I use uh, uh, mm, you know the uh, ST zero one yes five French guiding catheter yes so I don't I did I didn't have the uh, this kind uh, now this kind of the channel caster like uh, uh, <laughs> so, 
for the guide liner at that time. So I use a ST, ST Gen 1 five flange to, to protect the, this, uh, uh, this type of region. This is a good idea for road to, to, to protect, the, uh, to avoid the perforation. So, uh, you, so Dr. Oti Sensei uh, recommend uh, use a child cutter or a guide extension. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I think that it's a good, uh, good, uh, good idea. I think. So with that uh, protection, with the best perforation in that. Uh, yeah. With that protection, using a laser. Laser. Uh, laser, laser means. Uh, Mm, some effects of the sub intimate space. Yeah, I think it's okay. You know, I think in, in US, in our lab, in this situation, because of the difficulty in exchanging the retrograde wire to a rotor wire, what yeah. we would do is use a 0 0.8 uh, laser catheter at 8080. Uh, mm. It's not going to debug calcification, it will just create some space in yeah. between the calcium so that we can advance a, a balloon and then we would balloon dilate and then we will be able to get a, re, um, a Corsair or other micro catheter from above that allows us to switch over from an RGB to a rotor wire and then we would just proceed with the rotational attractive. That would be, it is obviously very complicated, you know, a lot of time procedure. Dr. Hanaoka Sensei, do you have any suggestions? <laughs> I think you know, it's a very difficult case, and uh, I don't know how in the case and the findings, including the IVAS and the uh, IVAS findings. So I think basically uh, this figure is uh, the, the doctor's speculation or the, the based on the IVAS findings? Yes. Yeah, based on the IVAS findings, so. Yeah. If so, and uh, the most and, uh, uh, point is and if you can uh, pick and the rollerblader, you may and uh, ablate the advantage to uh, make the whole and uh, uh, rupture of the vessel. That is a tragedy. So, but I think I'm not sure about and, the IVAS finding. If you have the, some margin, to and uh, uh, fit and the uh, rollerblader head to the, the calcium itself, we have the chance to make ablate the calcium chain and make the space to uh, dilate the balloon or everything. So another way. So I think that basically, uh, I'm now in charge of hospital to uh, see the every division. I would say, I would say, send in to surgery. Yeah, if the, <laughs> but I think, and uh, I think a laser is an, another option to make uh, the, to uh, blast, blast in the calcium chain and to uh, make uh, some space to and uh, uh, grabs and the calcium chain and uh, to make uh, make it possible to and uh, pass the balloon and dilate. So I think in the basically and uh, depends on the, the IVAS finding if there's less uh, chance to uh, pass the uh, the vessel. I uh, I will I will uh, adapt and the uh, operator to this region. The another way another way. I may change uh, the red red course. Mm. I mean, to outside the calcium chunk, inside the vessel. You you made it very well to uh, to get into the, the center of the vessel or the calcium chunk. That is a problem in this case. So uh, change the course in the outside behind the chunk in the, the subintimal space to and. Uh, uh to make a new uh, uh sub intimal space to connect the proximal uh, rca that is uh, easy to make a connection between a proximal and distal connection 
That that's is my good. Opinion. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. You know, Dr. Otsuji, you know, you mentioned earlier that uh, the operator was able to pass a retrograde uh, microcatheter. You know, mm -hmm. I'm surprised that now he has trouble, you know, passing a very small balloon from the top. There must be a small calcium spicule or something that's uh, in the way, obstructing the pathway. Dr. Otsuji? <laughs> okay. Yeah, from the any room, other right, comments right, right. from Just, any other yeah. panel members? Anyone else have any comments? Dr. Stoyer, uh, how do you think about the situation from the, uh, the point of view of the calcium uh, content? So. I think it's a, to do the load of radar is a most effective way mm -hmm. to pass through the lesion. But uh, as uh, Dr. Hayes mentioned that uh, the pop, to prevent from perforation, extension caster just a, just a proximal of the lesion advance and just a localized operation is an effective way to prevent from uh, perforation. So pro protect by the extension caster is an effective way. To, uh, to avoid the perforation, I think. So, so in other words, if I understand this correctly, you you take a guide extension, you jam it into the lesion, and then advance the rotation thoracotomy bar through the guide extension to do the rotator. Right. Okay. I probably think that I probably would use a small bar. And I, you know, we, at least in US, quite frequently do rotational atherectomy in a subintimal tract. In uh, 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 we have not particularly, you know, seen a lot of problem with it. You know, um, you just have to be gentle and it's just a few 20 second run uh, to develop the calcium uh, so that we can then implant a stent. But anyway, in the interest of time, we will uh, now proceed uh, to the next uh, speaker. Um, and uh, I would like, uh, it's my privilege to now invite uh, Dr. Atsushi Hirohata from uh, Sakakibara Heart Institute of Okayama to present uh, the next case. Dr. Hirohata. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. We can hear you fine, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yep. If you could share your screen. Yeah. Well, I have some problem for the uh, screen sharing. あと先生、マックですかマックです。マックで、しかもサファリですかサファリ。サファリだとできないです。先生、クローム、グーグルクロームから入らないとできない。あ、本当じゃあ、クロームをダウンロードしないといけないっていうことだね。多分、まあ
Dabei habe ich euch ja. Und Dr. Hirohata ist using the different so web browser. So now he, he can be, um, uh, share the next screen. Maybe yeah, it's yeah, right, really right, right. better to change the... the uh, yeah, yeah, we want fine. to the next filter. That, that's, that is fine. So let's uh, go to Dr. Mitsunori Muro at Kikuna uh, Memorial Hospital to provide uh, the next presentation. Thank you. That I believe Dr. Muto's mic is on the mute. Maybe Erico could unmute his mic. I'm uh, it's a remote. Can you yeah. hear me? We can hear you great now. Thank you. Thank you for chairman. I'm uh, <coughs> uh, Muto speaking uh, from Kikuna Memorial Hospital, Yokohama, Japan. And uh, my case is a uh, RCA CTO case after treated uh, region. My case is uh, eight year old male was admitted to a hospital with this airport. He had been attending to a outpatient clinic because of uh, chronic heart failure, ischemic heart disease, and uh, so on the CKD, CKD stage four. Uh, previously, he had been treated uh, to the proximal LRD region with drug eluting stent. However, uh, at this time, in January 2014, Proximal RC CTO and mid L6 CTO are revealed on CAG. This X ray was uh, <coughs> uh, showed uh, mild congestive heart failure, and in ECG, ischemia was suspected. In blood examination, its serum creatine level was about 3 0, and EGFR was 17. This is uh, echocardiography. LV function was very low, and uh, there is no <coughs> valvular disease. So we suspected worsening of ischemia was involved in congestive heart failure. So we performed CAG following treatment of heart failure. This is initial angiography. Uh, there's a Moderate stenosis with uh, plaque rupture was shown in LMT region, and the circumflex was totally operated. And the uh, parietal flow was coming via uh, septal channel to RCA. And the RCA was large vessel. Proximal RCA was totally operated. And this is schema. And uh, <clears throat> in circumflex, just proximal was very narrowed. And this side may be entry point. And uh, from uh, high lateral branch, collateral flow was coming to distal circumflex. And uh, there is a bridge collateral in proximal RCA. And, uh, Collateral flow via septal channel was coming to distal RCA like this. So my strategy is for uh, at first we try to treat mid L6 CTO, proximal LCX, and LMT regions with minimum contrast volume in order to improve collateral flow to RCA via H channel. Because we had to avoid complex procedure around this disease the LMT. We chose only microchannel tracking for LCX CTO procedure. If we chose crossover staging from LMT to LAD first, approach to LCX, LCX CTO region would become complex. And if we chose retrograde approach from LCX CTO via high lateral channel prior to LMT staging, hemodynamics might be unstable. On the other hand, 
probably channel would be important to keep him dynamic during next RCC to procedure via sector retrograde channel. If guidewire cannot pass the mid L6 CTO with microchannel tracking, next strategy was derided proximal S6 region with cutting power and DCB and implanted DS to LMP region. In second session, we tried to RCA CTO with retrograde approach first via sector channel and reverse cut technique in order to save the contrast volume. This is the PCI to R L LCA. At first, I crossed the guide wire to LED and the circumflex side branch and uh, check the IVAS from around here. The uh, circumflex main branch was coming from uh, 11 o'clock. And uh, this IVAS image is around proximal circumflex area. Uh, there is severe stenotic region in proximal circumflex. And uh, here is LMT site. Black rupture was shown in, in LMT. So I try to cross the guide wire with the uh, Sasuke Cassette and XTR and XTA like this. However, this tapered wire was not going to good position. So we check the guide wire position by IVAS again. Here is the uh, main branch of circumflex and the uh, XTA wire caught the uh, entrance of LCX main branch. And then I try to cross the guide wire with Sion Black wire again. However, guide wire could not pass the mid circumflex CTO region with, with the micro channel tracking. So I switch to direction, the proximal area. <clears throat> Next, I directed the proximal circumflex with uh, 2.5 millimeter cutting bar and uh, directed with 2.5 millimeter drug editing bar, uh, drug coated bar. And then I implanted uh, DS to LMT, just proximal LMT to LED. Following pot with four millimeter bar, this is final angiography of LCA. This CT image with that contrast is uh, RCA CT origin. And here is a calcified plaque. <clears throat> and uh, this calcified plaque was located the opposite, opposite side of the proximal branch, which means uh, calcium was located the inner curvature of the proximal RCA CT origin. This is PCI to RCA. Uh, at first, I crossed the guide wire to LED. However, I was could not pass the LMT stent site like this because the stent strut had been protruded into the outer for two millimeter. Guide wire advanced through the stent strut. So I tried to recross the guide wire with the Sasuke cassette and Sion Blue again. <clears throat> Fortunately, I was could past the LMT site like this. And the position of guide wire was fine. So next I try to cross the retrograde channel. This guide wire could, could advance into septal channel. However, target, target, target septal channel is like this uh, left side. So I used the Sasuke cassette again and advanced the uh, retrograde channel again with CMP wire, and uh, I changed the micro catheter to Corsair. This is deep injection. So <clears throat> I advanced the CMP wire to digital RCA. And then I advanced the Corsair catheter like this. Because Corsair could not advance to meet our meet our share around here, so we retrieved Corsair Cassetta very very carefully and uh, uh, changed to carry Cassetta for in Poba at septal ostium. Then carry Cassetta could advance uh, to the meet our shape region like this. This is bilateral tip injection. And then I try to cross the guide wire to CTO site. Antigrid guide wire was ultimate row three and the later grid wire was miracle nail three. However, ultimate, uh, ultimate growth wire could not advance into the CTO region. 
So I chased the guide wire from uh, UB3 to guy next to two, and the guy next to y, guy next to wire could advance to the CPO site like this. And then I directed the proximal site with 2.5 millimeter balloon. After that, retrograde wire could advance into the anterior guiding catheter. And then I directed with 2.5 millimeter balloon to the proximal area and the implanted to drug rate instead. This is final angiography of RCA. Because negative remodeling was shown by IVAS like this in the distal site of CTO. So we observed, observed the distal regions. And then I checked the uh, LCA flow again. However, flow of LCA was very poor. So I checked IVAS. This IVAS image is pulled back from uh, mid already. And uh, this stent was previous one which is implanted uh, about six years ago. And uh, this area was fine. And uh, around here, circumflex was coming from 10 o'clock. Yes, uh, now circumflex was coming and here is LMT. Around here, LMP stent strut was crushed. So <clears throat> I directed with four millimeter balloon to LMP site. And the final angiography of LCA was fine. So I finished this procedure. In summary, although we performed procedure carefully, Stent deformation was occurred pr probably during retrieving procedure from sector channel. Because this situation was predictable complication around the anterior guiding, sorry, retrograde guiding catheter, we should check shape of stent more carefully on angiography following ret uh, retrieving procedure. And the position of the balloon for reverse cut technique was too close from guiding catheter. I should have advanced guy next to two and bound catheter more digitally in order to create connection in the CPO region. Thank you for your attention. That wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, now, uh, the, uh, Dr. Yoshi Ashu uh, Minami will uh, provide uh, some comments. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Okay, so um, Dr. Muto, uh, congratulations uh, on the uh, nice job for the uh, RCA CTO and uh, LMT to the LAT finally. So, um, uh, so finally, uh, did you do uh, all the procedure at one time? Uh, I performed the, the procedure two times. First time is PCI to LCA, and the next time was RCA CTO. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, no, uh, just I worry the uh, procedure time and the contrast yeah, volume sorry, because the, time? yeah, mm -hmm. because patient uh were about uh, eighty years old female and the EGF value was very low, so I worry about that. Yes, procedure time was about three hours. Oh, nice. So the patient was fine, right? Yes. Okay. After that, uh, this patient was going better. And uh, mm -hmm. following uh, implanted the CRTD, uh, ejection fraction ejection fraction was improved from twenty percent to thirty about thirty percent. Oh, very nice! Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Doctor uh, Muto. You know this is a uh, uh, debate that's ongoing now in in Western world is um, complete revascularization versus incomplete revascularization, and cabbage versus PCI. So, you know, at least in, in the Western Hemisphere, uh, we would probably say that, you know, uh, we would not treat uh, the circumflex or we would not attempt to treat the distal circumflex CTO. It was not a very large vessel. Um, and we would want to see an IVUS evidence of a significant left main disease or an FFR evaluation of the left main disease. 
to um, then uh, consider implanting a stent. And, and the RCA CTO uh, procedure was done great. Now, why not to attempt to do RCA CTO integrate? It's a very short lesion and the success rate uh, with the Gaia second would be very, very high. At least in our hands, we probably would say, you know, we would 80% chance that we would cross the RCA CTO with just integrate crossing without any retrograde manipulation. Because this case was a CKD case and uh, his uh, EGFR was uh, 17. So I want to save the contrast volume. So uh, I choose the retrograde approach first to RCCTO. Okay. What about, you know, what about the hemodynamic significance of the left main disease? How was that determined whether the left main was significant or not? Was there an IVUS of the left main or an FFR? Uh, I checked uh, IVUS in LMT region, and the hemodynamics was uh, uh, almost stable uh, to branch irritation to LMT region and stenting to LMT region because uh, the irritation time was very short. And the uh, uh, next procedure uh, in RCCTO region. Uh, in, during retrograde approach, the dynamics was uh, stable. What was the what was the MLA in the left main trunk before the stent on Ivis? I See? saw the black rupture, but was there a MLA measure? Uh, uh, did you mean talking about intravascular ultrasound mm -hmm. image before the stent in the left main? You know, what was the minimal luminal area? <laughs> so, uh, did, you, did you perform the IBAS before putting the stent to the LMT? Maybe not. How about uh, um, MLA? Left main before PCI. Yeah, whether it, um, the reason why I'm asking that question is to just to see whether it was less than six millimeters square and whether it met the criteria for a significant left main <laughs> or was there a clinical judgment that the left main was significant. Either way is okay. I'm just asking a question for the sake of you know, uh, educating our uh, audience that what is the criteria on left main for IVAS examination? Oh, really? Dr. Uh, Professor Akasaka, you know, um, uh, would you comment on a left main uh, intravascular ultrasound for significance? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it it depends on the, the uh, yeah. place. I, I would like to say Asian people, the left main is not so big compared yes. with an yes U.S. or European uh, patient, right? So, so it it depends on the case. But as you said, uh, generally a six square millimeter is one of the cutoff value. Yes, right. Okay. Yes, yes, <clears throat> right. So what is the, is the in Asian, because the, uh, the, the size is small, do you use 5.55? Is there a number that is frequently used in Japan? Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, the data from uh, the Korea. They, they yes, uh, demonstrate, I, I forgot the co co uh, Korea number, but uh, 4.5 or around, I think, yeah. I see, so pretty small. Uh, yeah, very, very small. Yes, yes. Yeah. The second uh, question that I think may be worth discussing here is that uh, they observed a plaque rupture in the left main trunk. Yes. So it's, in other words, you know, they feel that this is more of a vulnerable plaque in yes. the left main and should be treated. Is that a common practice in Japan to, you know, treat a plaque rupture in left main trunk? 
Uh, yes, uh, it depends on the institution, uh, yes, but uh, if there are a baronial plaque in left main and uh, the patient hemodynamics is not so stable, we try to put a stent uh, to, to stabilize the hemodynamics. It depends on the case. Okay. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Professor Akasaka and Dr. Muto, as well as Dr. Minami, for that wonderful discussion. And we will, in the interest of time, we'll continue to move forward now. Uh, uh, my understanding is that Dr. Uh, Atsuhiko Sugimoto is now uh, ready uh, from Sagamihara uh, Kyoto Hospital. And I'd like to invite him now to present his CTO case. Thank you very much, everybody. Dr. Dabe, perhaps Dr. Sugimoto is having some technical issues again. I think he has perhaps left. Is it okay that we move on to maybe Hirohata Sensei then? Sure, please. Yeah. So it's a pleasure to invite Dr. Atsushi Hirohata again from Sakakibara uh, Heart Institute of Okayama. And he will now present the next case. Okay. Sure. Very nice. Okay, can you hear me? Absolutely, we can see you. Okay, <clears throat> so I will start my presentation. Um, actually, this is not CTO case, but a complication of rotor operator. <clears throat> sure. A case is a uh, 70 years old male, and patient uh, had a hemodialysis for eight years due to a polycystic kidney. And patients show the recent exertional angina, and cardiac echo shows the hypokinesia at posterior wall. And first PCA procedure was performed in other hospitals, and there was a very severe calcified stenosis of the proximal circumflex. And at that time, the bottom did not inflate, and patient referred rotorator to our hospital. This is the angiogram of the, uh, this patient. You can see a very severe uh, calcified region for the middle of circumflex on here. And also that this proximal part of the circumflex is very bending. And you can see here the right panel. Uh, as you can see here, the, uh, <clears throat> the region was located in uh, the middle part of the circumflex, but the proximal part of the circumflex is very bending, <clears throat> like, like this kind of shape. And we perform a, a rotobrator because the baron did not dilate at the previous hospital. And <clears throat> at first, we Try to do the uh, intravascular ultrasound, but I was did not cross the region. But microcatheter can cross the region, and we decided to uh, to perform rotablator. This is a procedure. An initial plan was rotor was performed only middle part of the uh, circumflex and do not uh, do not rotablate proximal bending sites. But, and you can see here that this rotor system is kind of a very shortcut to the proximal circumflex. And also that probably the bar was past 
at the proximal side of, uh, side of the uh, circumflex. And after 30 seconds, <clears throat> a patient that became a cardiac arrest and a general convulsion. And <clears throat> I thought it, it was a uh, cardiac perforation was occurred after the rotor operator and start CPR and ballooning at proximal circumflex and uh, VA ECMO was uh, established and pericardial drainage was also performed. And also wiring to the LED and circumflex and did the balloon dilatation at the proximal part of the circumflex. Definitely there is a coronary perforation occurs at the proximal part of the circumflex. And this is a 3.0 millimeter balloon. And after that, we put another guide, uh, guiding catheter from the femoral artery with seven French guiding catheter. And the graft master was implanted at the proximal part of the circumflex, as shown here. This right panel shows that uh, <clears throat> after the uh, graft master implantation, but as you can see here, that well, Perforation did not stop at that at this time. And we also perform a, a balloon dilatation with larger balloon 4.0 at the proximal part of the uh, uh, circumflex. But it was very difficult to stop the uh, <coughs> bleeding. And because of that, well, this is a kind of the bifurcation and leakage at the left main and LED and circumflex bifurcation. <clears throat> so it was very difficult to get the uh, hemostasis. And we also change our mind and try to dilate the uh, proximal part of LED, but not enough. <laughs> And at that time, we can see that there's a still huge um, amount of uh, perforation was observed around the left main coronary. And next, we try to dilate the left main to LED with larger balloon 4.0, as you can see here. When dilating a uh, left main to LED, this leakage seems to be seem to be stopped or very uh, very small amount. Next, we try to dilate uh, uh, dilate with left main to LED using a perfusion balloon. We are using long inflation, as you can see here. And when dilating a diff left main to LED, <clears throat> the situation seems to be better. And we continue the long inflation about 30 minutes. Leakage seems to be stopped around the left main bifurcation. So after that, we implant a stent to the original region for the circumflex. And this is the final angiogram. Stent was placed middle part of the circumflex and the graft master was also implanted to the uh, proximal part of the circumflex.
So this is the clinical course of the patient. After the procedure, hemo hemodynamic is very stable and withdraw ECMO next day and extubation after two days. And there was no higher brain dysfunction or cardiac dysfunction. And patient discharged at 14 days on foot. And in this case, it was not a good candidate for the rotavator due to the very severe tortuosity at proximal circumflex. It may be better to cover circumflex, os circumflex osteum using guide extension catheter if performed rotavator. And longer inflation with perfusion barrel may be effective in case of radial leak at the proximal site after glastomaphter implantation. Thank you for your attention. Oh, that great presentation. I'm glad that yeah. I'm not doing the case and you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, now um, it's a uh, privilege to ask uh, Professor Shite and Ishihara to provide uh, their comments about what their thoughts are. Yeah, I think uh, the, this case, the, the torture circumflex is a high possibility of uh, perforation. So I think uh, I use a uh, same French guiding cast the primary because uh, if the perforation happen, you can implant the graft, mas graft master easily using a same French extension caster. Uh, we usually prepare for uh, balloon, uh, prepare for rupture, and if the rupture happen, uh, put the uh, perfusion balloon first, and then anchoring the perfusion balloon and advance the extension caster to the distal, and easily implant the graft graft master in this situation. Mm. And also, um, proximal uh, LCX is sometimes is very difficult to stop the bleeding. Uh, as Dr. Hill had mentioned, due to the bifurcation. But I think it's, uh, we should avoid perforation at the region of bifurcation, as Dr. Hill had mentioned, that uh, using an extension caster and not upgrade the region of the bifurcation and just upgrade at the region of the distal circumflex to, to, to prevent the perforation. Uh, I totally agree. Dr. Ishihara, do you have any comments? Yes, uh, thank you. It's a very terrible case. And uh, so, uh, but fortunately, uh, he uh, uh, resolved, resolved the uh, so severe bleeding. And so, uh, as he mentioned, so if we perform the lot of later for distal uh, lesion, uh, it is better to use uh, guide extension catheter to protect the proximal lesion or proxima, proximal torture spot or easy or e even large bending. So it's very important message from him. And also, uh, so for this case, he uh, quickly introduced the VA ECMO so that he was uh, recovered nicely. But uh, in some situation, it, it is very difficult to establish the VA ECMO. It's a terrible situation. At that time, of course, uh, covered stent is one option. And also, if we can use, uh, it is better to use a partition balloon, like this case. But in some situation, it's difficult to use perfusion balloon or uh, for we, uh, in some countries, it's uh, unavailable uh, of uh, perfusion balloon at that time. So uh, we can use uh, micro catheter for uh, some uh, micro catheter to perfuse for the distal part. For example, for this case, uh, he used the um, perfusion balloon from left main to LAD. So the LAD coronary flow was reserved, but circumflex is uh, uh occurred a long time uh in the study at that time so uh, if, uh, uh, uh ischemia is very severe at that time we can put the micro catheter to circumflex and we can inject the patient arterial blood so that we can perfuse for this part. so in seven french guiding catheter we can use um perfuse and also micro catheter in in the same seven french guiding catheter so it's uh, so just one option to perfuse uh, both of important um, to bifurcation vessels. 
How about um, Dr. Hirohata, would you have considered using a smaller size rotoblator bar? Instead of 1.5, would you have done 1.25? Obviously on the computer, the size of the vessel is deceiving, uh, but uh, you know, a smaller bar may have saved the perforation. Um, no, I think the well, vessel size of the region, the uh, region size is about 3.0, or a little bit smaller than 3.0. So I guess that, well, 1.25 millimeter rotoblator is not enough to this case. Uh, and the major reason for the coronary perforation is a kind of shortcut of the circumflex. So I think if we use a small size of the rotoblator using 1.25, probably that if if we pass the proximal part of the circumflex, same kind of coronary perforation was also occurred. Hirohata, I have one question that uh, after yes. you run the graft master. Yes. Uh, why why you do the long inflation using that uh, 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 yeah probably the what issue for the for the leakage after the graft uh, graft master is mostly occurred in the proximal side of the region. Mm -hmm. In many cases, this whole part of the well <coughs> the artery is attached to the vessel wall, but proximal part is maybe not mm -hmm. enough. Mm, mm, mm. Attached to the vessel wall. So, if we dilate the proximal part with, with longer inflation, probably the leakage will become smaller mm. time by time. Yeah, but if you do the IVAS, you can see the graft, graft master is attached or not to the vessel. Mm. And you can determine you should do the Dangerous situation like a thrombosis, mm. yeah. especially after if you reverse the heparin. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think we should uh, we should refrain from doing a long inflation as possible. Maybe uh, checking IVAS and uh, uh, bigger balloon inflation immediately. Uh, maybe a safer way, I think. Yeah, thank you very much for good suggestion. Of course, uh, this kind of uh, well, stop breathing and. And also there's some risk for the uh, thrombosis for the, uh, even we perform a long inflation for coronary artery. So mm. that's the reason for, that may be better for using a, a perfusion balloon if you perform a, this kind of long inflation. <clears throat> great, uh, great discussion. It's always uh, easy for us to quarterback after the event. Uh, but uh, congratulations to you to, to save the patient. Uh, you did a great job uh, in uh, putting the VA ECMO in and, and uh, that saved the patient's life. It gave you enough time to, to deal with the, the perforation. So thanks again for sharing this wonderful case. Uh, and now uh, we will continue uh, uh, our presentations. I like to now uh, invite uh, Dr. Atsuhiko Sugimoto from Sagamihara uh, Kyoto Hospital. If his uh, technical issues are resolved, he can uh, present his case now. パワーポイントかもしれないですね。今、えっと。下に少し見えてるんですね、ウィンドウが。あ、開きました、開きました。We can see it now. Ah, I'm so I'm really sorry to have kept you waiting. Uh, no problem. It is not a problem. Yes, uh, Sanami Harakyo no Hospital in Kanada Prefecture. Oh, I will start uh, my presentation uh, at a uh, 360 degrees loop CTO region in RCA. The patient was a 69 year old male that she complained was shortness of breathing, and he started to feel shortness of breath on exertion from January 2019 and referred to our hospital with a diagnosis of heart failure from a local hospital. 
Following the prescription of some diuretics and antihypertensive agent, his symptom was improved as an outpatient. Past history was significant for untreated hypertension. And phys physical examination indicated the sign of heart failure. The blood test was unremarkable uh, aside from elevated level of NT pro BNP. The ECG showed the uh, poor airway progression in chest read from B1 to B3. And the left side is the uh, chest X ray on first ar arrival. And as you can see, the uh, plural effusion was accumulated uh, in his right, right lung, and after the prescription of diuretics, uh, his symptom was improved. The uh, uh, echocardiogram showed uh, moderately reduced ejection fraction and akinesia in my mid anteroceptor, mid anterior, and apex. To elucidate the cause of heart failure, uh, we planned uh, CAG. As you can see, the RCA was totally occluded at the middle part of RCA. And uh, you can also uh, see that uh, there was a loop uh, before the entry of CTO region. And uh, this is uh, Aureocodal view and aerocranial view of RCA, but uh, uh, because of the toxicity, uh, I couldn't find the entry of CTO. And this is uh, CAG for SCA, and uh, CAG indicated uh, severe stenosis in PL branch and uh, subtotal occlusion at the middle portion of LAD. Uh, this is a RAO and LAO image. So you can see that the septal channel uh, was connected to this part of RCA. Uh, of course, uh, we recommended CAVG to him, but uh, he rejected. So we decided to treat him with PCI. Uh, first of all, uh, I treated the LAD and put in Zion Sierra 2.25 by 38 millimeters. The uh, distal part of the uh, stent region was unclear, but uh, I thought it was a shrinkage of the vessel. Uh, this is a, a coronary CT image for RCA. Uh, when I saw it, that uh, the CTO region was relatively straight, and the classification is uh, not so much. Then I start. I attempted to uh, treat him with PCI. Yeah. The guiding catheter was L1.08 French uh, side hole. And uh, at first, uh, I crossed the cones branch for anchoring barrel, and uh, I tried to penetrate the entry of CTO with uh, XTA, but the XTA couldn't penetrate. So I switched wire from XTA to Gradius. Fortunately, the Gradius uh, went into the entry of CTO. Of course, the, because of the toxicity, uh, torqueability, uh, stability of wire was uh, really bad. So, and uh, of course, the, because of the toxicity, I didn't think that I was uh, go through the this go over this loop. So I wasn't sure if it's a correct route or not. So I switched to retrograde approach. And uh, fortunately, the so the three I went through the septal channel easily. And this is a retrograde tip injection. But uh, as uh, advancing the wire, that uh, there was a second uh, 360 loop at the distal part of RCA. Uh, this is the first loop, and this is the second loop. 
and I used uh, Miracle Neo 3 at that time. And uh, I performed a directed reverse cut in the straight portion between the loops. And uh, after yeah, externalized the wire, I put a total of three stents. And this was a final image. Uh, this is a final image. As you can see, the, uh, his RCA was stretched uh, because of the stents. And this is a CAG of nine months after PCI. Uh, you can see that uh, the root, the his coronary artery reverted back to the original shape, the uh, two with two loops. Uh, I think it's hard to see, but uh, uh, there was a gap between stents. Maybe I think that as his heart beat and uh, he, his uh, stents were dislocated uh, from each other. Uh, we experienced a, a severe atrocious RCA CTO region, which was successfully treated using retrograde approach. Fortunately, there were less calcification in the coronary artery of this patient. If there had been any calcification, especially in the regions, this PCI couldn't have been succeeded. Thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Sugimoto. Now I'd like to invite uh, Professor Akasaka and Professor Yasaka to provide uh, their comments. Dr. Yasaka. Yes. Uh, congrats, congratulations to success uh, this very uh, uh, severe uh, angulated region of the CTO. And, uh, I cannot see the uh, region, uh, so my first question is how long is uh, this CTO region? Sorry, I didn't measure the length of the CTO from CT. Oh, how about the uh, uh, CT image? Ah, sorry, I, I didn't gauge the, maybe the 30 millimeter. 30? Okay. so. And uh, another uh, question is uh, uh, um, maybe uh, at first, I think that you need a uh, uh, bilateral uh, nacrowire technique in this uh, belly loop region in the RCA, but uh, you can uh, pass through the wire with just a uh, uh, without a knuckle shape. Oh, yes. That is a, a very nice technique to the mm -hmm. uh, uh, to pass the wire through that this very uh, complicated region. Uh, what's the tips of the uh, wiring for this CTO? Uh, actually, at that time, uh, I didn't use a uh, knuckle wire technique because I yes. didn't think that the uh, knuckle wire uh, mm, can go through the loops. Maybe I thought at the time that uh, nacro wire can lead to uh, bezel perforation. So mm. I used uh, Neo3 to track the route. Mm. Okay, thank you. And uh, I have uh, another question to the uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, what is the reason the the coronary shape is very difficult uh, between the CT angio and the uh, angiography? Mm -hmm. What is the reason? How do you think? What do you think about the reason? Oh, reason. Ah, uh, mm, uh, uh, you mean the the etiology of tortuosity? So yeah, in the uh, CT image, the region is uh, uh, looks like a straight, but uh, ah, yes, yes. Uh, in real root of the RCA is very tortuous. Yes. Why? Sorry, uh, yeah. uh, unfortunately, the CT image of our facility was not so good, and uh, maybe I think that. Uh, 
the radiography, uh, radiology technician uh, made this image, uh, mm, but he didn't think that there was a loop at this time part. But uh, when I see it uh, in hindsight, mm. maybe it's a uh, uh, sorry. Hanoko Sensei. Hanoko Sensei. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, is this a, a common? Uh, is this a common phenomenon? Yes, I mean, I can hear you. Uh, Hanoko Sensei. Okay, you. Uh, uh, you yes, asked me and I comment about yeah, the CT, yeah, yeah. right? Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think in the presenter that said that then the CT modality quality mm. uh, is uh, is a very crucial point. Mm. If you use an a three and a three three hundred twenty or something that two. Uh, six or four, and you can uh, see then the toxicity of the best cell, even mm. the best cell is the CT of body. Mm. And uh, you can see the total best cell cost without yeah. contrast media, mm. right? To check the differentiated the uh, best cell margin uh, uh, with uh, the lipid or some and, uh, uh, tissue. With uh, uh, different from and the vessel, muscle or something itself, so that uh, guides you to easier uh, wire manipulation mm. to uh, raise up and then the success rate. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. That Professor, depends on the money. Yeah, <laughs> Professor Akasaka, you yes. know. Uh, after uh, on follow up in geography at nine months, uh, yes. the separation between the stents, I suspect that the artery has gone back to its normal shape. Yes, yes. Know, with a lot of tortuosity, and now the stents have been elongated. Would yeah. you consider doing an OCT image uh, to see if the gaps should be now filled with another stent or you just leave it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's a very, very, yeah, uh, interesting question. I, I think it might be. Uh, I do not have uh, enough data to answer correctly, but uh, uh, the, the, the portion of the tortuosity might be uh, yes, uh, the motion uh, uh, of the, the, the RCA is very yeah, yeah, significant. Therefore, there are some risks. Uh, of uh, stent fracture, even if we put uh, the stent at the, uh, the same position, right? So, but uh, uh, if there are no, no symptom and no ischemia, I, I can uh, leave it alone uh, uh, because uh, we, uh, ischemia is the, the most important uh, uh, reason to uh, treat uh, the lesion. So, uh, but it, it's a very difficult question. Dr. Shite, how do you think? <laughs> this reason is, is very difficult to get the image. Maybe a uh, uh, motion artifact and uh, accordion phenomena may happen for CTO IVUS. But uh, I think it's uh, if there is no ischemia, I agree with Dr. Akasaka, just leave it. Uh, because uh, even if you implant the stand again to this lesion, Stent fracture may happen again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very possible. So you believe that you know this is a stent fracture we just created this gap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, great, you know, presentation. Uh, fantastic comments by both uh, Professor Yasaka and Dr. Kasaka. So we are a little bit over time, so we'll now continue to move forward with the second session. I know it's late in Japan, so I want to keep everybody on time if possible. Um, and now uh, we're going to change gears and we're going to talk a little bit about optical coherence tomography. And uh, it's a pleasure to now invite Dr. Masaru Ishida from Iwait uh, Medical University to share with us the first case on OCT. 
But can you see my uh, slideshow? We can see very well. Okay, so so now I'd like to start my presentation. So uh, first of all, I, I'd like to introduce uh, my hometown. So Iwate Prefecture and Morioka City. Uh, interesting, interestingly, uh, for now, uh, we have never seen uh, COVID-19 patient uh, in our area. So I don't know why the reason, but uh, the the only thing I can say is my hometown is very rural. <laughs> I would anyway, like to, uh, I would like to live there right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to start my presentation. So this is my uh, case background. So OCT imaging clearly shows calcium fracture and calcium modification following orbital and rotational attraction. However, for patients with chronic kidney disease, OCT-guided orbital or rotational atrectomy is still challenging. Uh, from the data uh, of orbit two trial, so total amount of contrast was more than uh, 170. So I think uh, Android guidance PCI using uh, orbit is uh, unaccept unacceptable for this kind of patient. So comparing OCT versus IBUS guide, guided PCI, uh, clinical outcome is similar, but uh, total amount of contrast is completely different. Uh, uh, not completely, but different, uh, slightly different. Uh, OCT uh, guided PCI is re uh, required uh, higher volume of contrast than uh, IBUS guided PCI. So, so do you think uh, OCT guided PCI is safe and useful for CKD patient? Uh, my case is 70 years old male with diabetes, hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia, and CKD, and liver cirrhosis. And he was referred to our hospital due to asymptomatic coronary ischemia detected by stress RI test. A diagnostic catheterization showed heavily calcified coronary stenosis in prox LED and moderate stenosis in mid LED and prox RCA. So this is a uh, diagnostic case. Uh, so as you can see, uh, severe uh, stenosis in uh, prox LED and moderate stenosis in uh, mid, uh, mid LED and uh, prox RCA. So this is baseline angiogram. So as you can see, uh, calcium deposit uh, uh, in both sides of uh, coronary artery. So this is a uh, severe calcified lesion. So at first, I performed 2.25 ballooning before OCT imaging. And next, I performed OCT imaging by manual Dickinson flash. So this is first OCT imaging by manual Dickinson flash. And so you can see uh, severe stenosis at this site, but uh, most severe classified segment is here and here. So you can see a thick calcium uh, with uh, circumferential uh, severe calcium. So I decided to perform orbital atrectomy to prox D and then uh, additional ballooning after orbital atrectomy using 2.25 balloon and 3.5 a non compliant balloon. So this is such uh, OCT imaging uh, immediately after orbital atrectomy and ballooning. So you see a uh, nice uh, calcium modification by the arterectomy. And also you see a uh, nice calcium fracture at here. So next I uh, inserted a second guide wire as a landmark of septal branch. And then I put first stent at the mid LED. And a uh, second uh, stand uh, implanted in uh, approximately. 
and uh, I performed the post due. And finally, I checked OCT imaging. So, so this is a final OCT imaging. So, so stent was fully expanded and we see some uh, calcium fracture. In this case, uh, we got uh, more than five millimeter square uh, MSA. And this is final angiogram. So in this case, uh, I used uh, just uh, 33 uh, millimeter of contrast. And uh, we, this uh, patient, uh, in this patient, so renal function is not uh, changed before and after procedure. So this is summary. OCT guided PCI by manual dextran flash is accept acceptable and might be useful for patients with CKD. So for heavily calcified region, OCT imaging before and after orbital atrectomy is useful for physician. Thank you for your attention. What are uh, their comments? No. Ask me. No, we were asking for what your thoughts were about um, Dr. Ishida's case and whether do you use uh, manual dextran for OCT imaging? Yes, yes, uh, it's a very wonderful technique. And uh, uh, using a manual dextran uh, infusion, uh, and uh, we try to uh, keep uh, the small contrast within the guiding catheter, right? We can get uh, some uh, uh, yes, contrast, small amount of contrast in the, the uh, yes, uh, uh, LAD or CX at that time we can use an angio co registration also. Mm, yeah. it, it's a very uh, great technique to do the uh, OCT with angio co registration, and uh, it is our uh, routine uh, daily clinical practice in case with a uh, kidney dysfunction. Yeah, and also, uh, what is the concentration of dextran do you use? Uh, Ten percent dextran lactate. Uh, lactate is very important to to uh, avoid the arrhythmia and uh, yes, uh, it is important. Uh, in Japan, only uh, one uh, pharmaceutical company uh, yes uh, uh, supply. Uh, the, the I see. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's a very important point. Ten percent uh, dextran lactate when you want to use. And do you uh, do you dilute it or inject pure dextran? No, not a pure dextrose. As I told you, 10% dextrose with uh, lactate, right? Lactate is very important, yes. I see. Dr. Professor Hanaoka, do you, do you, do you use uh, OCT in patients with renal dysfunction? Yeah, of course. And in my institute, you know, I nominated some doctor to dedicate it to you know, an OCT guide PCI. Uh, Dr. Sugaria has uh, the a main law about this field. So, uh, in the institute, we check and uh, the CT without contrast media to uh, evaluate the con uh, calcium content, especially for the CKD patient, to and the predict and the complexity, complexity and the difficulty of the PCI mm -hmm. in terms of the calcification content. So the, after that, and uh, uh, to check and uh, the thickness of the uh, uh, calcium uh, in, uh, using an you know, OCT. So we can predict to how much, how much we have to ablate for the calcium content to make the best result to in terms of the, the expandability of the stent on everything. In this case, especially and uh, to the, the uh, operator, uh, 
predict the, to uh, end using OCT very uh, well and to uh, predict uh, the uh, orbital attractivity to make the best of the, the, to the possibility of uh, the fracture of calcium uh, layer or a thickness or to get a uh, full expansion of the stent very nice and sophisticated way to do so. And at a point, and, uh, the, the, the external flash is and, uh, the very uh, something difficult to uh, cooperate with and, uh, the assistant in, in Japan, the ME and the operator to take and the timing of uh, the OCT image is very important to get a good, very clear image. So uh, that is a very train, train the, the, the CAT staff make uh, the good result about that. Great. So one, one option that you talked about is to do MSCT to determine the degree of calcification to determine yes. therapy and the effect of the therapy. Is there a cutoff on MSCT of what should be the calcium score in order for you to determine whether to use a threctomy or not? Yeah, of course. And uh, yeah, so far the calcium content and a very exact and uh, estimation calcium content amount is very difficult because of the, yeah, uh, the blooming effect on everything. So, but and, uh, we use very low uh, dose of the uh, contrast media. We check and uh, the uh, subtraction CT uh, with and without and the calcium content and the stand on everything. And uh, according to two uh, data, to we uh, predict and the calcium content for the lesion, especially for the and the uh, stenosis lesion. So I that see. gives us a very uh, good information about procedure. Professor Akasaka, do you have any comments about that? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I I think uh, Dr. Hanaoka used uh, uh, yes, uh, subtraction technique by MSCT. It is very really useful to to uh, identify the stenosis, uh, and uh, I think only a, a, a Canon uh, CT can uh, yes uh, uh, do that. Right? I think uh, only yes. Uh, it, it is uh, only one CT, yes, uh, to subtraction, yes, yes. yes. So I think that uh, 256 is also can do that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, theoretically. Yeah. Because on the one rotation uh, scanning is very uh, crucial point. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Hanoka. Yeah. I can uh, see. Is the uh, dual energy CT? is useful for the estimate of the volume of the calcium? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very uh, difficult to uh, I, 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 I said about that, that and, uh, too much and uh, too uh, with or without contrast to uh, the predict uh, the, the total amount. But finally, we have to check and uh, with and, uh, uh, OCT or something uh, about the thickness or the, the longitudinal uh, distribution. So that gives us an exact um, uh, um, data to uh, how much we have to aberrate or something, how, how much and how long have to aberrate. That is uh, depend on the OCT condition. But then the CT only give us some um, Pre, uh, prediction about that. So, but I think in the very near future, 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.25, the very fine and the precision, precision type of CT give us that uh, data about uh, the very exact calcium content uh, contribution. You're right. I know, I know, thank you. Hey, thank, you so much. thank you so much. Uh, okay, well now thank move you. to the next uh, presentation. Uh, uh, will be Dr. Kenji Nakatsuma, 
from Mitsubishi Kyoto Hospital. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you, Dr. Chabe. Uh, I'm glad to have a chance to present in this case presentation. <clears throat> uh, a case, a uh, 44-year-old man, and uh, his chief, chief uh, complaint abnormal Q in ECG. Past medical history was uh, hypertension and dyslipidemia. He had a chest pain only once before half of a year. He was referred to our hospital from primary care doctor due to abnormal ECG changes without current chest pain. ECG was normal sinusolism and abnormal Q in list 2, 3, and AVF. Laboratory data shows no cardiac enzyme elevation. And echocardiogram is uh, was moderate hypokinesis in the inferior left ventricular wall. So clinical diagnosis was old myocardial infarction that might be occurred six months ago. This is a pre-PCI angiography. This is a uh, LCA. As you can see, uh, no significant stenosis in LCA. <clears throat> and this is the RCA. Uh, as you can see, uh, mid RCA, uh, there are, uh, there are uh, headsness uh, and stenosis. So uh, we check the uh, uh, this hazardness by OCT. This is the first OCT. Uh, Pro back from 4PD. And uh, this is a bifurcation and there are, uh, there are multiple channels of various sizes communicating each other with smooth scepter, so-called honeycomb lung structure. The scepter were composed of high signal intensity and low signal attenuation, attenuation suggesting that such structure consists of fibrous material. And this is the second OCT. Uh, the wire is uh, closed uh, 4PR and 4PD and product from 4PD. Uh, panel A in the, uh, panel A and panel E indicate the uh, position of uh, panel B, C, D. And panel B in, is a bifurcation region. Uh, the wires, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, scepter uh, between the wires. And panel C uh, is a uh, RCA distal. Uh, there are scepter uh, between the warriors. And finally, uh, the uh, number three meet, meet uh, the, there, uh, there are same lumen in the wires. So, uh, uh, we are, uh, perform uh, uh, this PCI, uh, uh, it is difficult to uh, single stent, but we perform the cutting burn angioplasty at the bifurcation to create communications between the lumens, between 
painting. Uh, we use a blue balloon. This is a cutting balloon and a snazzy stent and final KBT. This is a post PCI angiography. Uh, <clears throat> We got the success, successful revascularization. This is a post PCI OCT. Uh, we can get uh, uh, good expansion of stent. In conclusion, we reported a case of honeycomb lung structure finding in OCT in patient with OMI. We perform the cutting barn angioplasty of the bifurcation to create communications between the lumen before stenting, resulting in successful revascularization without complex stenting. Cutting barn angioplasty before coronary bifurcation stenting can be a therapeutic choice for such honeycomb lung structure. Thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, very much for that very nice, clear presentation. Uh, now I'd like to invite uh, Professor Otsuji and Yasaka to provide their comments. I see Dr. Yasaka is ready. Yeah. Uh, I have some experience for uh, over the PGI for like this honeycomb-like uh, uh, region. And, uh, uh, this kind of lesion is very easy to dilate with a cutting balloon and uh, make connection through the uh, each part of the lumen. So I completely agree with uh, Dr. Nakazuma. And uh, uh, and uh, this uh, honeycomb-like structure is very easily to see with OCT and very clearly. So OCT is very useful to uh, 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 make a, a success PCI. That's all. <laughs> Professor Otsuji? Yeah. So I'm, I have the same opinion, but uh, Dr. Nakatsuma? Yes. How did you, how did you decide the uh, uh, size of the cutting barrel? Size? Uh, just connect, uh, just create a, a clock, clock? Yeah, clock, yeah. And uh, uh, we, mm. uh, we use uh, uh, 2.5 uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, diameter of so because, uh, because the yeah. one root is very eccentric, so yeah. very eccentric. So did you concern about the vessel preparation when you use a uh, uh, larger problem? So I would like to know the how do you did you decide the uh, in case of this type of a honeycomb or lotus root or uh, region? Yeah. So very eccentric, very close to the Adventist. Yes. Uh, uh, I think uh, this lesion is uh, mm, uh, no, no calification. No, no no, no so yeah. uh, I, 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 I don't uh, uh, consider that uh, <laughs> proportion in yeah, this, this, this case. Because you show that uh, middle part, the CO and the CO blue is a very eccentric part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The vessel is very large. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But usually, uh, we can easily dilate it, uh, this honeycomb lesion with a uh, balloon uh, with uh, low pressure, usually. So, um, maybe we can uh, direct it, uh, this uh, uh, this region with full atmosphere or like that. So I don't think uh, there is not so much risk 
to the uh, negative population, uh, coronary population. Because I have uh, one uh, case that the uh, best is the populated, because, because in that case, uh, the rotor should lose CTO. But uh, I, CTO. Cannot, uh, I cannot decide that that root is uh, in the intima or bridging crater. Ah. My wire go into the uh, bridging crater. <laughs> I need a two millimeter because I cannot ah. use an uh, imaging device at that mm -hmm. time. Ah, okay. So, Thank you. So, it's a very uh, difficult situation, yeah. I think. So in the OCT, Dr. Chite, mm -hmm. can you uh, uh, decide the the, uh, the difference of the bridging crater with the adventitia or, or the uh, intraluminal crater? So I, have, yeah, <laughs> I have never seen the, uh, the bridging crater by OCT, mm -hmm. but uh, this image is mm -hmm. clearly show both guide mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. uh, main vessel. Because you cannot see the adventitia any any place, mm -hmm. so usually in this situation, maybe I will do the cutting balloon three three millimeter uh, balloon size mm -hmm. because uh, original original vessel size is more than three or three point five, and I think it's uh, this uh, tissue is very soft, so uh, less pa possibility of perforation because uh, this region is soft and easy to dilate and make a mm -hmm. connection. But I, I advise you to show the OCT image after cutting balloon mm -hmm. and make sure there is no acceptor between the two wires. And also, after implant the stand, why don't you uh, show the three OCT of the step uh, uh, uh. form? If you want to uh, show the presentation more attractively. <laughs> Thank you. I, I I don't have that data. Sorry. No problem. No problem. So I think the great questions and and comments have been made about honeycomb appearance on OCT. One question, of course, is whether uh, this honeycomb appearance uh, needs a further treatment with cutting balloon angioplasty to cut the septa to facilitate the wire into the side branch, and then of course. Uh, uh, potential for a large amount of black shift, you know, uh, when uh, you are treating the bifurcation. And I think several important points have been made. Uh, uh, and I think for, uh, continue, we will continue to see uh, interesting cases like this in the uh, future uh, to increase our, our learning. But some great points, all three uh, uh, professors, Dr. Otsuji, Dr. Yasaka, and Dr. Shite. So let's move on to the uh, next uh, presentation. Uh, and now we will ask uh, Professor uh, Wataru Yamamoto from Higashi uh, Takarazuka Sato Hospital to do his presentation. Thank you, Dr. Dave. Um, uh, today I would like to talk about the clinical usefulness of optical coherence tomography in instant resinosis regions. Ten years ago, Dr. Uh, Gonzalo reported to uh, OCT classification of instant restenosis, and in it, he classified OCT images into three types, homogeneous, layered, and heterogeneous. However, we often encountered OCT images that could not be classified these types, like these pictures. So last year, we reported novel OCT classification of instant restenosis, and we classify OCT images into six types, homogeneous, rayered, spec, low intensity with invasive strut, calcified plate, and calcified nodule. Let me explain detail of these types. And first is the homogeneous types. A uh, previous study has reported this type of neointima has a smooth muscle cell and in collagen-rich fiber, and this type of neointima represents the normal healing uh, process of uh, injured vessel. And uh, actually, uh, we can see uh, this type of neointima in region uh, of the diameter stent. 
And next is uh, rail types. In the surface area, in the surface layer, we can see uh, some massive cell in collagen rich fiber as the same as homogeneous uh, types. And on the other hand, in the deeper layer, we can see uh, extracellular matrix, including the proteoglycan. And uh, this type uh, represents a uh, delayed healing process of injured vessel. And we can see uh, this type of neo intima in region with instant stenosis with uh, drug eating stent because uh, drug eating stent suppresses the healing process. And next is a uh, speculative type. A previous study has reported this type of neo intima has a deposit of fibrin tissue in it, like this picture. And uh, rayed types has, also has a deposit of fibrin tissue in it. So we think uh, these types are derived from the organized thrombus. And the difference between them is the duration from stent implantation to instant restenosis. Uh, our group has already reported on a case that shows a new intimal change from speculative type to real type. So the difference between them is the duration. And the next is a raw intensity with invisible threat. And this type of new intimal has a atheromatous tissue in it. And the stent threat behind the uh, atheromatous tissue were uh, invisible because uh, OCT rights are scattered and uh, they could not reach their uh, stent strut, so we cannot see their uh, stent strut on this side. And the uh, frequency of throw from phenomenon after burn duration in this type of neo intima was highest in our analysis. And next is a calcified plate. This is a dense calcified plate. Uh, dense calcified plate appear as a raw intensity tissue with sharply delineated uh, border, like this picture. And there is a direct connection between the original calcified plaque and neo intimal calcified plaque. So continuous development of calcified plaque is one of the mechanism of instant restenosis. And the last is a calcified nodule. This is a calcified nodule. The calcified nodule appear uh, as a low, uh, low intensity protein mass and with uh, back scattering and diffuse water. And precise mechanism <coughs> of the calcified nodule development is unclear, uh, but the previous study has uh, reported the possibility that uh, Fracture of dense calcified plate might be associated with uh, calcified nodule development. So sometimes we can see the calcified nodule neo intima in the region with the shibia calcified plate and the hinge motion because the hinge motion might break the uh, calcified plate. As I mentioned, the difference of neo intimal morphology brings various OCT images of instant restenosis regions. And OCT images of instant restenosis region can be classified more correctly with our novel OCT classification. And we hypothesized that uh, the vascular response to of instant restenosis region to barangioplasty might vary depending on the OCT types. And we researched, about, uh, researched it, so let me introduce a study that uh, researched the vascular response of instant restenosis regions. During this period, of, uh, there were consecutive 601 instant restenosis region in our hospital. Of those instant restenosis region um, with bare metal stent or without uh, adequate uh, OCT images were excluded from this analysis. And finally, um, uh, 104 instrumental resonances region were enrolled in this analysis. At first, we carefully reviewed the entire segment of instant resonances regions. And OCT morphology was assessed at three sections, minimum room and area site, and one millimeter distal and proximal site to minimal room area. And predominant images were enrolled in this analysis. 
And then we classified uh, predominant images into six types according to our novel OCD classifications. And before after burn dilation, we measured stent area and uh, neointimal area at 11 cross section to calculate the change rate of stent volume and neointimal volume. This table shows the region characteristics. As you can see, the stent diameter and length and the volume stent ratio are very similar in all groups. On the other hand, the maximal volume pressure of calcified plate and calcified nodule were higher than other groups. And this table, uh, this figure shows the increased rate of lumen volume. The increased rate of lumen volume in calcified plate and calcified nodule were lower than other groups. The reason is this, uh, the reduction rate of neointimal volume in calcified plate and calcified nodule were lower than other groups. And the increased rate of stent volume in calcified plate and calcified nodule were lower than groups. On the other hand, the, in case of homogeneous tissue, the reduction rate of neointimal volume was high, lowest, but the increased rate of stent volume was highest. Let me explain the potential mechanism that brings a different vascular response of instant restenosis region. After stent deployment, neointimal tissue develop in the stent like this. In case of low intensity with invasive strut and speculative type, uh, these, tissue are soft, uh, these tissue are softer than other tissue because uh, low intensity tissue was, uh, is a uh, uh, atheromatous tissue and speculative type or the, is a uh, Extra matter, uh, extra matter, uh, cellular matrix. So the tissue are very softer than other tissue. So after balloon dilation, the most part of the neointimal tissue disappear easily uh, by balloon by dilation. On the other hand, in case of homogeneous tissue, uh, the main component of this type uh, neointimal uh, type is. Uh, Collagen fiber and smooth muscle cells. So even after burn dilation, most part of the uh, neointimal tissue remain inside the stent. However, however, the burn dilation force can be conveyed to the stent strut through the residual uh, neointimal tissue. So stent area can be expanded like this. Lastly, the, in case of the calcified plate and calcified nodule, uh, most part of the stent struts might be surrounded to calcified uh, plaque, like this picture. And it is very difficult to get optimal uh, lumen gain by baroangioplasty, like this. Uh, this is a potential mechanism that brings a uh, different vascular response in our analysis. In conclusion, OCT is very useful to identify the morphology of instant restenosis regions, and the vascular response to baroangioplasty differs depending on the OCT types of instant restenosis region. An uh, appropriate treatment strategy for instant restenosis regions should be determined based on OCT types of instant restenosis regions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, very much for that great presentation. Uh, you know, in our institution. OCT is absolutely the standard of care for patients, those who have instant restenosis. Now I'd like to invite uh, Professor Shite and Professor Minami to provide uh, their comments about uh, OCT and instant restenosis. Yeah, I quite agree this uh, conclusion that according to the OCT type of uh, uh, tissue characterization, the treatment strategy may change. Uh, I think it's uh, the calcified lesion. We should need uh, sometimes a rotavator in this lesion. And uh, also, I have one question is, uh, how about the effect of a drug coating balloon? Maybe uh, the response of a drug coating balloon may dif differ from uh, the tissue characterization. So how, uh, what kind of lesion is effective for preventing the dysanalysis by drug coating balloon? Um, I think the um, main purpose of uh, using drug coated barrel is uh, inhibit uh, uh, prolifer uh, proliferation of smooth muscle cell. So in case of homogeneous tissue, I think the drug uh, 
uh, coated barrier is very effective because our main component of uh, homogeneous mm -hmm. tissue is so some mass <laughs> cell. So uh, the coated barrier is very useful, uh, effective for uh, homogeneous type. I think so. Yeah, I agree that uh, uh, coating barrier is sometimes uh, very effective to prevent the resonosis in the homogeneous lesion. And how about the stenting? What type of uh, finding you you recommend a stenting stent? Um, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving a uh, important question. Um, um, but uh, I don't have. Uh, uh, I cannot answer correctly. But the, uh, from my experience. Um, when I uh, treat the region that has the uh, fast resinosis, uh, I use drug coated barrier. And uh, uh, if uh, recurrent resinosis occur, uh, we uh, I uh, I may put the stent. But uh, I would like to avoid uh, putting stent because uh, if you uh, recurrent resinosis occur after uh, deployment of uh, bracketing stent again. Uh, it is very difficult to get uh, acute lumen gain by 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 uh, angioplasty, uh, uh, or uh, even if we use a rotational atherectomy for um, accumulated stents. So I would like to avoid uh, um, stent deployment. Uh, as possible as I can. Thank you. I agree. Dr. Minami. <clears throat> um, first of all, um, I'm very impressed with your uh, noble classification for the interstitial region. I think we should continuously, you know, to try to explore the new classification based on the OCT image. I think not only for the listenotic region. I think we should at least consider uh, any, you know, the novel classification for the de novo region um, also. Then um, <clears throat> the, my question is that, uh, did you uh, investigate the relationship between the specific uh, listenotic type and any, you know, the clinical characteristics or procedural characteristics, including the stent type or something? Um... Um, uh, I'm sorry, um, I, I don't have enough data about the stent, uh, uh, about drug editing stent. Um, uh, in case of the uh, uh, raw intest with invisible strut, uh, the, as I mentioned, the, uh, um, as I mentioned, the frequency of stent, uh, sort of raw, Throw flow phenomenon after barrel dilation was uh, highest in our analysis. So when we treat the uh, uh, raw intest with invisible stress types, uh, we put the um, distal protection device uh, such as field trap uh, before uh, adding barrel dilation. And uh, uh, this is just my impression. Um, in this uh, drug extent error, the main reason of resistance is, uh, is maybe um, maybe uh, organized thrombus, not proliferation of smooth mass cell. So when we treat the uh, coronary vessel region, uh, um, if it is possible, I would like to avoid putting stent because sometimes uh, drug related stent or uh, re, uh, cause the restenosis, and it is very difficult to treat the restenosis region uh, when restenosis uh, again uh, occur again, again and again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the, another question is a, a similar question uh, from uh, Professor Site, and um, I understand the difference in the uh, efficacy of the balloon angioplasty. Uh, according to the difference in the listenotic pattern, so uh, so you don't um, uh, decide the treatment strategy. I mean, the putting a stent or the, the drug coating balloon uh, based on these images, or you just um, 
avoid the stenting for the resistant tick lesion for all the cases? Um, yes. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I, um, uh, I would like to avoid uh, putting stent all for all cases, all types. Um, especially in case of a calcified plate and calcified nodule, uh, I think um, uh, developing tool is uh, very useful to get the uh, optimal uh, acute gain. And, uh, and uh, the recurrent resistances uh, rate of, uh, in case of calcified plate and calcified nodule was very high compared to other types. So I think the putting stand is not a good option for a region uh, associated with calcified plaque. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Great uh, presentation. Wonderful uh, ideas. Very clear. Uh, to now, uh, we will move to our last, uh, uh, Dr. Otsuji, yes. <laughs> Is there any time difference between yes, please. region morphology, visceral morphology, and time difference? Uh, 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 sorry? I mean, the time difference. Ah, yeah. Difference uh, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the morphology and the, uh, between the morphology and the time difference. Yeah, thank you for your question. And uh, in case of early phase, uh, we sometimes see, uh, I, we sometimes uh, observe the uh, specular type uh, because a uh, specular type is uh, immature uh, organized thrombus. Uh, so we can see a uh, uh, specular type in early phase. Uh, however, on the other hand, uh, uh, in the rate phase, uh, we frequently see the uh, Raw intensity with invisible strut because it is a neoatherosclerosis, so it takes a long it takes a long period to uh, happen neoatherosclerosis. So, in case of neoatherosclerosis, uh, we see it in rate phase. Thank you for your question. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Okay. So to our last presentation now, I'd like to invite Dr. Kaza Masa Kurogi from Miyazaki Perfectual Nebioka uh, Hospital. Dr. Um, Kurogi. Thank you, Dr. Dabe. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, absolutely perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a great opportunity to present our recent work in this conference. Today, I'd like to talk about how to observe out of cell region using telescope guiding ex extension catheter in OCT guided PCI. Observing stent proximal edge near the out of cell region in OCT guided PCI is challenging as it requires blood clearance. The material of the guiding catheter is not near infrared transparent, and this is a significant limitation of OCT guided PCI. So we try to observe our cell region using some techniques. First, we try to get OCT image by flushing blood cells via disengaged guiding catheter. In this case, we successfully observed our cell region, but this is the only success case. We thought this method is not promising. Next, we tested guideline extension catheter. We can evaluate intravascular images through the tip of guideliner, but in the proximal region, narrow gap of coil makes large artifact and hard to evaluate vessel structure. And we successfully acquired OCT images through telescope guiding extension catheter. The telescope consists of the soft polymer tip and the relatively wide gap of the helical coil reinforcement made from near-infrared transparent material. Here, I present a case. 70 female admitted to a hospital for effort angina. Coronary angiography revealed severe stenosis in the LMT to LAD. After preparing the region by balloon angioplasty, the 2.75 and 
3.0 millimeter were implanted from the LAD to LMT ostium. Stent optimization was performed with 4.0 millimeter non compliant balloon. And this is the angiography after stenting. You can see the good angiographical results. And after stent implantation, six lens telescope was engaged into the LMT and the guiding catheter disengaged. Then we tried to obtain OCT image using the backflow of contrast media. These are OCT and IVAS pullback images. OCT successfully visualized the stent proximal edge near the outer region with, uh, through the telescope. And the corresponding IVAS image shows this stent was implanted from just uh, ostium of the LMT. So let me explain the details of OCT images. First, the distal part of the telescope, you can see the vessel wall through the soft polymer tip. And next, in this region, in this platinum iridium marker area, you can see nothing because of artifact. And in this middle area, you can evaluate stent expansion and position through the wide gap of the helical coil. This is an artifact of the helical coil. And in the autosteal junction, the cell structure was suddenly disappeared and the blood of aorta was observed. We recently reported this case in PCR online, supported by urine intervention. And we investigated the feasibility of this method in another cases. In this case, DES were implanted from the LMT ostium six months ago. We observed auto cell region in follow-up angiography. You can see auto cell region in follow uh, you can see auto cell region through the telescope. Okay. Um, in this case, we implanted this from LMT with seven French system. We observed auto cell region in the final angiography. You can clearly see OCT image through the telescope guiding extension catheter. But sometimes contrast media is hard to remove blood cells through the six French telescope. In this case, brushing blood cell is not enough with contrast. In such situations, Low molecular weight dextran is recommended for brushing blood cells. You can see clear OCT image with dextran, but not contrast. Six French telescope gives limited space for injection of flashing media. It has been reported that the viscosity of contrast media is 2.6 times higher than that of dextran. Because of its low viscosity, Dextran enables high flow through the limited spaces. This is a six lens telescope using Dextran case. Using Dextran, our dorsal region was successfully visualized. You know, OCT has two pullback mode. In the survey pullback mode of 75 millimeter, it is very fast, but you can see a lot of artifact and how to evaluate Arosia region. On the other hand, high resolution pullback mode of five, uh, 55 millimeter, OCT image is much clearer. When using this technique, high resolution pullback is recommended. From our experience, 3D OCT image helps us to detect out osteal junction. This is the telescope and this area is Arutausia Junction. And in this case, the 3D OCT image of Arutausia region through the telescope. This artifact is due to the helical stainless steel reinforcement of the telescope. 
you can see all those regions here. Stent was implanted uh, just ostium of LMT. Okay, this is the last slide. Using telescope, we successfully acquired OCT image for the uh, alt ostial region. High resolution pullback mode is recommended in this technique. If the blood clearance is not enough, low molecular weight dextran is the key to acquire the clear OCT images. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. And Dixon, uh, a very, very interesting uh, uh, and very important uh, uh, technique of uh, using uh, guide extension to obtain uh, OCT images, differences between a six and a seven French guide extension and differences between dextran and uh, uh, dye injection. So I'd like to invite now Professor Ishihara to provide his comments about uh, whether he utilizes these techniques. Yes, thank you for showing nice technique. And uh, um, um, next time uh, I will try to use uh, oh, to perform OCT with um, uh, this uh, guide extension catheter. But I have two questions. One, first question is so maybe the first case you used, you treated LED with IBAS, but uh, after the treatment of uh, LED and also left main, uh, you used OCT and also telescope uh, guide extension catheter. For, for this case, uh, do, uh, do you want to see the image, uh, both image IBAS and also OCT uh, for comp uh, comparison? Or uh, uh, you want to uh, examine the effect, efficacy of uh, this getting guide extension catheter? Or uh, do you have another uh, so purpose to use uh, OCT? Thank you, Dr. Ishara. Uh, thank, yeah. uh, that's an important question. Uh, yeah. In the first case, uh, as you mentioned, I performed I was guided PCI first. Yes, and yes, then, as yes. you said. Hi. And then uh, I tested the uh, telescope uh, yes, yes, for yes, center yes, optimization. Yes. 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 Yes, I understand. So, really um, but uh, it's uh, oh, uh, very important to uh, so check the, the eff efficacy. And so second so point, so my comment is, so uh, if you use the uh, guide extension catheter, uh, so to put the tip of the guide extension catheter in the left main uh, trunk, uh, uh, using seven French guiding catheter, and if we use the six French guide extension catheter, it sometimes injure the left main bifurcation. Uh, so during the so injection of contrast or during the injection of uh, 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 dextran, at that time sometimes uh, guide extension catheter is uh, advanced with the flow of the contrast, and at that time some sometimes I have seen twice of so left main injury and even perforation uh, so that uh, it, it is very important to keep block the uh, Y connector or we should keep the guide extension catheter. It's very important if you so uh, show and introduce this uh, so uh, technique, uh, it's very important point uh, no, uh, to avoid the left main injury. Thank you. That's very important uh, point. Thank you for instruction. Yeah. I'm carefully using this technique. Thank you uh, uh, very much, uh, Dr. Ishihara, and I thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kurogi. So with that, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, conclude our uh, session. Uh, I want to also thank uh, Abbott Japan uh, for their very kind support uh, to arrange this session. Uh, I want to uh, uh, Yuki Kono-san, uh, who has now recently become a new general manager of Abbott uh, in uh, uh, Japan. Uh, is uh, Yuki around? Uh, would you like yes. to uh, Hello, say a word? How are you? I am fine. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Time no see. Yes, good to see everyone. Um, thank you for uh, moderating this. And I would like to also thank all the expert panels and the, um, the six presenters. <laughs> and yes. And hopefully next time we'll be able to meet per directly in Florida. And maybe we do this more often because I think everyone's more want to engage more. And I think these are the great opportunity that Abbott will be able to support in the future too. So 
thank you again today. And since we're over time, I want, want to be more sensitive with the time. So thank you so much, Dr. Dave and other presenters. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, our moderators, uh, Dr. Akasaka Otsuji, Hanaoka Yasaka, Shite Ishihara, and Minami to take a time out of their very valuable uh, busy day uh, uh, late in the evening uh, to be with us. Uh, and uh, it's a great special relationship between C3 and Japan. Uh, I, I want to end with a word of uh, Sir William Osler, who was the forefather of uh, medicine and also the founding father of John Hopkins University. He once said, the best preparation of tomorrow is to do today's work superbly well. And, and it's very well said by uh, Professor Osler, this was in 1800s, you know, who started John Hopkins University, because the Japanese physicians, as you could just see, uh, is doing great effort to do uh, our today's work superbly well and preparing our uh, specialty for tomorrow's uh, uh, better outcomes for our patients uh, in Japan and the rest of the world. So we already have over 200 uh, requests today uh, from uh, C3 attendees to watch this video. Uh, we were very early in the United States uh, this morning, but uh, uh, many uh, physicians are going to have the opportunity to, to watch uh, this wonderful uh, cases and this discussion are uh, done by the world expert. So thanks to all the speakers who took us so much time uh, uh, to put together those wonderful cases uh, and uh, all the uh, speakers who uh, have stuck around uh, such a late uh, night in Japan to be part of it. And I look forward to seeing you again on uh, this platform again in a couple months. And uh, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to host you all again in Orlando next year uh, with a wonderful uh, golf game again for everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so have a wonderful night. Yeah. See you soon. Bye.